This video is brought to you by Epic Loot. Noble ones, the noble ones are here. I need to put on my armor. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. Today we've got this really interesting topic. I mean the Vikings, the Samurai, they're both so interesting and we know what sort of weapons they used, we know what sort of armor they used. Today we're going to look at what would happen if there was a clash between these two very belligerent people because I mean think about it, the Norse, well yeah very warlike, the Japanese, <laughs> yeah. Uh, clearly, this is an hypothetical discussion. I mean, as far as we know... Well, let me make that gigantic. As far as we know, the Norse never reached Japan. But I mean, I mean, the Norse are the ones that went to America, we discovered. So I wouldn't be surprised if they discovered, you know, tomorrow you, you number once, linked to me one of those articles that says, Oh, by the way, <laughs> the Norse actually did manage to get to Japan and we just didn't know. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, there is that rover now in Mars. And, you know, if... if there is like a big news on the TV and they tell me, by the way, this rover found bacteria on Mars. I would be like, oh my gosh, there are bacteria. I mean, I don't really know what to do with that information in my life. But, you know, it'd be like, wow, there is, there is life on another planet and we found it. But if they told me, and by the way, the rover found a longship, like a Norse longship with some shields, that, that, I would be like, well... Well, you know, it's Norse you're talking about. I mean, no big deal. What's up with all this clickbait? Just give me something I didn't know already. We know the Norse had a lot of different kinds of weapons. And uh, if you want to know more about these weapons, I strongly suggest you, like, strongly suggest you to check out Scholar like Gladiatoria channel on the weapons that the Vikings both used and didn't use. It's a fantastic video, link in the description below. Uh, but today we're going to look at some of these weapons. And uh, so basically all the weapons that were used by the Norse. And then we're going to see how effective would they be against samurai armor. Although, one thing that is important to say as we proceed in our discussion is that Japanese armor evolved all the time. Like, if you don't pinpoint specifically an era, uh, it's, you know, samurai armor will look completely different. That's not, that's not even going into Japanese armor as a wider term, which means also, which would also include pre-samurai armor. So today we're just going to look at samurai armor, but we are going to choose a specific era. See if you can guess it. The Viking Age! Who would have thought? I mean, that's from 793 to 1066. 1066 being the very famous date of the Battle of Hastings between the Duchy of Normandy and the Anglo-Saxons in England and all of that. That's generally speaking, that's when the Viking Age stops and 793 is when it begins because 793, to be specific, the 8th of June is when the Vikings raided the monastery of Lindisfarne. Very, very famous if you've watched Vikings and of course you have, um, you, you know about that. And uh, what did samurai look like in this period of time in Japan and what sort of armors and weapons were they using? Because I mean, the samurai armor I'm using here, it's called the Tose Gusoku in Japanese, but this is a 16th century kind of armor. So th there is a massive gap between the samurai wearing this and the Norse warriors that generally speaking we refer to as the Vikings. So uh, it wouldn't be really fair, I mean I might say a couple of things about it because it's, you know, it's fun, but uh, it wouldn't really be fair to put a 16th century samurai, like my impression here, against the Norse because I mean if I was a 16th century samurai, you know, the kind of samurai that were working for Oda Nobunaga and you told me, hey, by the way, there is, there is a bunch of Norse men, can you please kill them, I'd be like, yeah. I mean, I'll just take my Tanegashima Teppo, the matchbox type Aquabus, and I'll just shoot them to death. So, you know, it's, that's not going to get me many views because it would be just the end of the video right now. And I don't think the YouTube algorithm, as far as I understand, I mean, it does change a lot. But as far as I understand, that's not how it works. So, no. What did the samurai look like? Were there even samurai at the time? Uh, that's a bit of a tricky question. Now, before going into the details of how the samurai armor looked at this time and then looking at all the different weapons used by the Vikings, there is one thing I would like to show you. Now, before continuing our discussion, I would like to take a moment to mention the sponsor that made this video possible, Epic Loot. Now, Epic Loot is a website, an online shop, where you can buy all sorts of Viking-related jewellery based on Norse mythology. And they've got loads of stuff. In fact, the guys at Epic Loot have sent me 
some significant loot here and we've got bracelets we've got pendants we've got rings uh, for example check this ring out it's made of solid stainless steel which means that it's going to remain nice and shiny without requiring any uh, maintenance at all and it's really really nice i love that it has all the different nordic runes inscribed onto it but on the site you will see that they have got loads of stuff i mean i'm on their site right now you can find rings for example which happen to be my favorite and they've got necklaces and for example this necklace that they were kind enough to send me they've also got bracelets and again i've got one to show you here but they have plenty on their site. Now, they already have some pretty good deals. They've got discounts right now on their site. If you use the coupon code METATRON for the next 10 days since the release of this video, you will also get free shipping. So this is going to be insanely affordable. In fact, I mean, I mean, look at this. They even got an incense burner, which looks like a Viking Drekar, the longship, with all the little shields. I mean, that is, that is pretty nice. That would look great on top of my table here i think i'm gonna get one <laughs> which is kind of funny i mean i've just successfully advertised onto myself make sure to click the link in the description below check out their shop and big thanks to epic lot for supporting my channel and my content production happy shopping Okay, welcome back. When you look at it, like you Google it, when the, the samurai started and they tell you 12th century, but that's, uh, I wanna say no. I wanna say that the samurai, the beginning is from the either the 9th to the 12th century. That's when it really starts to become an actual thing, you know, the samurai. The bushi, however, it precedes that and really the sort of warrior that we can already kind of identify as a prototypical samurai begins in the fifth century because the fifth century is a very important date of course it predates the uh, viking age but it kind of helps us to understand the sort of armor and weapons that samurai did use during the viking age and that at least late viking age and that would be two events Event number one the fifth century is when horses were introduced into the japanese archipelago Archipelagus. I can never get that word right. Archipelago! That will change the way Japanese warriors fought completely. Secondly, again in the 5th century, we have the introduction of Lamela armor, which at the time was called Keiko, which is interesting because it's the precursor to the samurai armor, which was Lamela all the way up to when they started working plate, they started using plate like this one which is, again, a later invention in Japan. Yes, they had tanko, but we are speaking about the samurai now. Now, the Heian period is from 794, so one year after the beginning of the um, Viking Age, to 1185, so it goes kind of further. But we want to have a look at that, like a Heian period samurai versus a uh, Norse of, during the Viking Age, like a raider. Interestingly, however, the fact that both the concept of lamella armor and mounted combat were introduced and became popular at the same time in the 5th century in Japan, I do not think that that's coincidence perhaps for another video. Now, successful Vikings, Norsemen, raiders of this time would have been wearing a sort of armor called male armor. Viewers of my uh, channel, regular viewers of my channel already know all about this armor, but it would have been made of riveted rings of iron uh, or even steel at some point uh, linked together and then they would have been wearing helmets. The samurai at this time would have been wearing lamella armor. Now, lamella armor uses scales, we should say lamelle, but they're very similar to scales, uh, called Sane in Japanese, but the difference between a scale armor and which was also used in Japan later on and lamella is the arrangement and also the fact that generally speaking lamella armor is not attached to a backing, it just it's an armor formed by itself, whereas scale armor generally speaking needs a backing. But I do have a dedicated video onto the difference between lamella armor and scale, link in the description below. In scale armor, they are arranged like a rooftop, one on top of the other. But in lamina, they arrange the other way around. It's a very effective form of armor. And also, it's interesting to see which areas of the body would protect. Now, later armor, generally speaking, has an opening right at the guts. I'm going to show you. So, my breastplate reaches this part, just above my navel, 
to grant me the ability to move and then the armor continues with these attachments here but there is this very area here just around where my guts are that is unprotected ha ha so that's a weak spot of samurai armor well it isn't it isn't because i mean there are many ways to protect that area like a lot of samurai would wear underneath a protection for this part made usually either of mail or it could be made of hexagonal scales again i've got a video on that in the description you find but the reason why i'm telling you this is because early types of prototypes of armor such as that of keiko didn't have this space it was continuous and it had a very interesting silhouette which looked a bit more like the hourglass shape of early European kinds of armor. So that wouldn't really be much of a weak spot either. So the weak spots of the armor would be, again, under the armpit, which can be protected, but it still kind of is an area that the samurai needs to be careful uh, and make sure to protect. Also, generally speaking, the kote, so the protection of the arms, leaves the underarm not much protected at all. The majority of the protection is on the top. There are some exceptions to this, but generally speaking, this is also a part which you could cut. Behind your thighs is generally speaking one of the areas that is taught to attack in schools of Kenjutsu to deal with armored combat. And then, of course, the face if the samurai is not wearing a mask or perhaps under the sides here. It's usually they do wear the yodare kake, which is like the protection here, but you can still go behind it. The reason why I'm telling you all these spots in samurai armor that can be attacked or exploited is because I don't believe any of the Viking weapons that we're going to look at today would be able to defeat samurai armor of the period just by attacking it directly. So let's have a look at the weapons that the Vikings could use and let's see which would work best at exploiting the spots that samurai armor has which are weak spots. So the first one is going to be of course the Norse or the Viking sword which is very very popular. Now if you look at Peterson's typology the kind of blade we're looking at is usually Okishot type 10 it's a broad blade very good for cutting it has good cut authority in the cut like Madison says uh, not very pointy though so not really a thrusting weapon per se so generally speaking a cutting weapon used one-handed it is very famously usually they have like an I capital I shaped hilt now would this weapon be effective against Japanese armor well again you can't really cut through armor I think it's not really the best weapon to take against a Heian period samurai or later. The fact that it's not thrust specific kind of makes it difficult to exploit armor. There are parts that you can cut, so sure, you don't need to kill your opponents to put him out of action. And in fact, if I were given a Norse sword as my only weapon to use against a samurai in full armor, see if I can find a weak spot and try to cut him underneath, because as I say, generally speaking, Kote doesn't protect this area and if I can manage to get a proper cut I could win because perhaps my opponent now is not really able to fight. So what about an axe? Well battle axes were used by the Norse and one of the difference of course between a, an, an axe made for war and an axe made as a tool is the thickness of the blade. The business end of the axe is the part that really does all the damage. These will be relatively thin on axes that are supposed to chop people. Instead axes that are used to fell trees of course they've got their chunky because you don't need for the weapon to be nimble but the Japanese do know that axes can be used in combat in fact they do have the Ono and sometimes the Ono can get really big and one of the disadvantages of the axe is the fact that it's difficult to defend with an axe which is why you need to pair it with a shield so if I were a Norse warrior I would definitely take my shield if I'm going to use an axe which I mean I would do the same with the sword but even more with the axe but the axe does have more power generally speaking, than a sword. I haven't been able to test a Viking sword and a Viking axe to see which one hits harder, but I do believe that an axe, particularly a bearded axe, would be a better choice against a fully armored samurai than, say, a Viking sword. Also, because with a bearded axe, you have the ability, because of the little beard, to hook, and that could be great against an opponent who is most likely using a two-handed weapon try to get rid of his weapon or perhaps just put him off guard with some proper hooking and using the Norse shield properly and then go for a proper cut. Perhaps here 
But what about a bow? Well, a bow would be a great weapon to use against the samurai, but please keep in mind that the samurai are archers. So if I had to put my money on an archery match between a Norse bowman and a Japanese mounted archer, I would probably go for the Japanese mounted archer. If there are bows into the equation, I'm going for an axe and a shield. But if the samurai are not using bows, they're just going with Naginata, they're going with Uchigatana, or maybe Tachi at this period actually, even Ono or Yari, then a Danax would be great because it helps me to compensate with a lack of distance. Because remember, the, the Samurai is using a Naginata, the Samurai is using a Yari, and even a Tachi is relatively big. So if I'm just using a shield and an axe, like a single axe or a sword, he will have a range advantage, which I can compensate with a Dane axe. A Dane axe is a great weapon, and I think it would hit with a lot of force. And if you manage to hit him, even on the Kabuto, that might be enough, perhaps not to kill him, but to stun him and then go for the kill. But if you really are going for range advantage, then an Atgeir, Atgeir, is that how it's pronounced? A hewing spear might be the best choice. A hewing spear, of course, is a spear used for hewing, so for cutting, but you can always thrust with it as well. So it would be good to keep distance and perhaps try aim at those gaps in the armor of your opponent. And the fact that you can both cut and pierce with it could be good because it allows you to maximize depending on what's going on. If you see that perhaps here a cut would be great, then you can cut. But then if you see maybe a thrust would be better, maybe you can thrust. Although again, Perhaps just a single spear would just do the job. And remember, the reason why I would rather go for a spear than an atgeir is because, as far as I understand, a hewing spear is used two-handed. Instead, a spear, just a normal, regular, pointy spear, can be used with a shield. So, I think in this case, best case scenario so far, shield and spear. One-handed, keep them at bay, use your superior defense, and go for a good thrust into the parts that you can exploit. What about the sax? Now, yes, I know, Matt Easton did say that the sax is probably not a battlefield weapon per se, which I agree with. But here we're really looking at a scrap, not really a full-on battle. Uh, say, if you're a bunch of samurai, a bunch of Norse, what's going to happen? Well, if you're fighting against a person in armor, we know from the medieval late period in Europe that a rondella, so the short knife, a short dagger, can be a good weapon to use to get into the gaps of the armor, particularly to subdue the knight. So, here's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the, in the description below. But here's my conclusion. I wear the sax, but I am using a Norse shield, a round shield, and a spear. I close in, keep on thrusting, and I close in the distance with the samurai because of the fact I've got the shield. I wound him perhaps with my spear. Whatever the case, the moment we get really close, I put him on the ground, take the sacks out, and now I can really thrust and go for the gaps and kill him. This would be for me the best way that a Norse warrior could try, at least, to subdue or defeat a samurai of the Heian period. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, let me put a little reminder to the sponsor that made this video possible, Epic Loot. Thank you so much to the guys at Epic Loot for supporting my channel and obviously thank you for watching my content and I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know with a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.